Welcome back to the Fast Performance Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Cole Thomas, with my co-host, Connor Reynolds. Connor, what goodies do you have for us this week? Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to all the high school and Chico guys that signed NLIs uh, this past week. Uh, one of my guys, Chase Cecil, who's going to Kaiser University uh, in AI down in Florida. Uh, shout out to you, Chase. And then we have a couple PRs that we're going to run through super quick. Uh, shout out to Frank for getting distance and exit view, though Blake Robinson for distance. We have Colin Johnson for rotational acceleration. Brady Hirsch. Oh, Brady. With distance, exit velo, rotational acceleration, and bat speed. Uh, Toby uh, with distance and exit velo. Aiden Nunn's rotational acceleration. Uh, Andrew Mim uh, for distance. Josh Farr for exit velo and distance. Uh, Brooks uh, Tulaney. Distance and exit velo. Eli Jackson, exit velo and distance. Uh, Brady Peterson, exit velo. Uh, let's see here. Austin Leonard, uh, rotational acceleration, distance, exit velo, and bat speed. And then we have Shea Cecil, no shocker, uh, with exit velo right there. Uh, Braden Thompson, exit velo and distance. Camden Mann uh, with distance. And then we have Bruce Fink uh, with bat speed and exit velo. Uh, Christian Lozano uh, with the rotational acceleration. Uh, Austin Leonard again with another bat speed. Bruce Fink uh, hit 99.5. He's a sophomore at Northfield. Uh, so good job for him. Uh, Frank hit another uh, PR. He got up to 92.2 on the exit velo. Shout out to you. Brady Peterson with distance. Frank again on bat speed. Uh, we have to- uh, Toby Grayson with bat speed. Uh, Thomas Worth with distance, and that's your PRs for the last week. Jeez, I know, crushing that, aren't you? Dudes are killing it, baby. Dudes are killing it, putting in the work. What about you? Uh, we don't really do, haven't been doing a whole lot of PRs lately, just because now we're moving into um more pitch design slash live AB work now. Yo, but I mean, guys are coming along; they're looking pretty good. So I can't wait for uh, you know what. Their season starting. I got a couple kids. Like I think um, Luke Davenport's doing that PBR North showcase, whatever mm-hmm. that, whatever the hell that thing is, <laughs> in uh, Superior. So we hope he does very well with that. Uh, if we're recording this on Sunday, so he does that today actually. So we wish him the best of luck Good with luck, those brother. things. A lot of the guys that are doing those sh- showcases coming up here pretty soon with those preseason IDs. We wish them a lot of luck. I know Sam will be doing the one in. I think he'll be doing the Denver one, the one that's going to be down at uh, in Castle Rock. Hey, yo. And then, uh, yeah, we wish all those guys the best of luck in their showcases. And we, you know, hope they show out and generate a lot of interest from the colleges. Do you got anybody that's doing those showcases at all? Or I not off the top of the crane uh, cranium. Um, not that I can think of, or at least they haven't told me about it. So not too sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what do you okay? What are your general vibes about, uh, or how how would you describe your vibes about the way showcase ball has been going? I, I kind of like these preseason IDs, like the things like where kids are at least partially ready for the season and can are willing to give are able to give their best um, efforts and their best stuff as opposed to those wonky out of season ones. Yeah, um, I I like them. I think it's a good idea. Um, I think it's really cool to have that like preseason like notifications and stuff like that because a lot of places do like preseason all states, blah, 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 blah. Right. but it's all just judged off of what they did last year uh-huh. and projecting what they think they're going to do this year. And at the high school level, there's just so many variables. Like, I mean, the littlest thing like a girlfriend breaking <laughs> up with you could like literally like. Or possibly the reverse of it, getting a girlfriend. I've seen well, really good Well, I think players. that's where a lot of those preseason All-Americans, those preseason All-Conferences is like – it gets a little out of hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, but like, and, like, I mean, at, in the, at the college level, it's a little bit better because guys will have an idea of who's going to be good and who's not. But that the high school level, yeah, exactly. You don't know what's going to happen. And now they're having this preseason like ID, stuff like that. So I think it's a, I think it's a cool idea. Um, I, how I kind of judge this kind of stuff is, all right, if I was in high school at this time, like, how would I feel about this? If I went to it, how would I feel if I saw others go to it? Right. And then the third view is as a coach, how do I feel about it? It's kind of hard to like get upset about it. Um, I think as long as it's just continuously, like, 
I personally, and like, obviously it's not my business model, so I can't tell them what to do, but like, I think these things should be like super cheap, like invite only throw it out to the people that you actually think could be considered all state. Right. And then judge it from like, just judge it from that right there with like, I would say 75% what is shown in that showcase, 25% what they did last year. Yeah. Uh, and kind of go from there. So I, think I, they're cool. I just like the, I like the, the, it's a better concept. I like have it close to the season. That way guys are more primed to do it. I hate the ones where it's like, we're just going to do random showcases throughout the summer and the fall. Like, you don't necessarily know if the kid's ready or not. Right. Yeah. And that's what I hate. And, and then you get, we get, we're getting these like showcase data from like, there was some PBR event not too long ago. I forgot which one it was, but like the top, th the top velocity for whoever was the one doing it was like 82. I'm like, well, why are we, where are we showcasing if we're throwing 82? Yeah. And now if the kid's a freshman or a sophomore, I'll give you credit, but it's, you know, you know, do you, did you need to be doing a showcase in the middle of January? Like, were you primed and ready to, perform at the highest possible level most likely not right so that's where i you know i had a conversation with a parent i think the other day and they were asking me about the showcase thing so i'm just like and i might my, my message stays consistent like if you want to do one or two of them a year go for it and like one to see if they're if there's what you where you stand in the at least in the space of colorado like this is something we talked i think we talked about last week is where guys just they only know where they stand in their kind of their little bubble. Yep. Right. Of their neighborhood or the teams they play against and all these different tournaments and all like it's like like you can be the best in that little bubble, but then when you go outside the bubble, you realize, oh, there are a lot of people just like me. And then you go out of the side of the state borders and you go like, Oh, there are a lot of people way better than me. <laughs> then you go like over to Arizona, it's like, oh Right. So you, it's, it's it's how do you prepare yourself for that inevitable? Oh, there are people that are better than me in this game, and how and I can transition that. Like if you want to go to these showcases, like in Arizona or Florida or whatever, I I'd say like go to one or two mm -hmm. and just be like, okay, now I know what's the playing field, what's the level I've got to achieve, and that way I can go and decide. Okay, I need to go be here. I need to be doing this. I need to be this size. I need to be throwing this hard. Now you become all right. Now, if I want to do these things, here's the level I've got to reach. 100%. All right, moving on to the main topic today. Connor, you have a tweet that you allegedly say will fire me up. I full heartedly believe that this will fire you up. Um, right, hit me this with it. is by uh, Brian Bergami. Husband right. and father of three, head coach at Sunny Broom Community College. I don't know where that is. Uh, somewhere in New York. That's the S U N Y. Okay. Um, it's all New York schools. In, in the SUNY system. Yeah. All right. So this is a tweet. As far as hiring at the college level goes, I really don't know what most look for. One thing I can say for sure is if a coach had to pay $300 and above to become certified in anything, I'm passing. At that point, you're pro at that point, you are just following steps from a playbook. And then so someone responds and says, coach, sorry for the lengthy comment. While I understand your view on this, I couldn't disagree more. Someone investing their own money into continued education of their craft shows a level of commitment and desire to use the resources available to come the best coach that they desire to be. Which uh this wild human being decides to respond with no problem coach opinions vary everyone has their own path to follow some of us invested blood sweat and tears and others invested money great thing about baseball is there are room for everyone and you will always be continuing your education what i value won't align with everyone um yeah that fired me up and so i ended up responding i said sorry uh let me help you out real quick some of us invested blood, sweat, money, or I apologize. Some of us invested blood, sweat, and tears, and others invested all of that on also on top of money and time. If someone had a PhD, a master's, or even a bachelor's, that costs money, yet they're praised, and rightfully so. It is possible to be both as a coach, and yet some suck, some do suck with certifications, but that's every area of professions. Please do not knock someone for investing in themselves just like you wouldn't knock someone for investing in a higher education on the resume. Not saying to hire strictly off of that. Uh, just don't knock someone for having the certifications. So that was like my response, but what is your, how do you feel? Where are you at? 
I don't know. It's just it's just closed minded if you ask me. It's just like it doesn't it doesn't fire me up. It's just more like all right. It's just it's that there's this old school kind of mentality or this way of thinking that and I and I see it all the time on Twitter or Instagram or things like that where it's like there are plenty of the old school coaches who will just shit on like oh this person's Repsido certified or Driveline certified or Armory certified or where wherever you can get a certification and like so you don't actually know anything you just got a certification to do it I'm like fuck. I know what my, I'm talking about. I just, mm-hmm. it's, I, I, I wonder what's this like, is it an obsession or is it a, I don't know how you define it, but just there's, there's this willingness to just be ignorant. And there's this, it's all, like, there are some people out here in this space. I just feel like it's almost cool to be dumb or cool <laughs> to be ignorant. Yeah. Just say, I guess ignorance is the best way to put it, but it's, but it's that, I learned something like I'm, I'm sure this coach has been coaching for a long time and he's been through the ringer. He knows everything. He's seen just about everything you could imagine as a baseball coach, but it's that I've seen everything I know. And therefore I know everything, mm-hmm. you know, it's the um, deciding that my horizons can no longer be expanded. And I, that's why I, t- I tell a lot of guys, like young, younger coaches that are coming up who will ask me for advice. I'm just like, dude, always be constantly learning because the day you stop learning is the day that you kind of just start failing your students. Right. Like I don't, like, I feel like I know a lot and I feel like I'm one of the best at what I do, but it doesn't mean I, there are not stones left to be unturned or uh, grains of stand to be kicked or, you know, any kind of other metaphor you want to, or analogy you want to use, but just like, I always want to be constantly learning. I always want to be, perfecting what I can and cannot do that way I can be in the position like I know how to do this and I don't know how to do this I can help each individual athlete that comes in here based on their based on their needs and their uh, desires and their limitations and what they succeed at you know deciding that like this coach goes and just you know if you spent money to further your education in baseball I don't want you is such a like i don't know like i don't know how to you know if you it's kind of just that what's that lincoln quote it's the um you know if you got how what oh jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway you know r- hor- really really dumb really dumb assassination jokes aside um it's the if you had what was it if you spent two hours if you were to spend two, what 20 minutes yeah like 20 minutes to chop down a tree i would spend what 15 minutes yeah, sharpening, sharpening the axe. axe yeah it's like okay well you need to make like there's so many coaches you're so such a moron yeah. <laughs> oh, but shit. um no that's a really good quote Sorry. but it's just like you know if you're not preparing yourself for every intended situation or every situation you'll run into or you know and this is like i said i've said many times on this podcast is Athletes are about to be smarter than their coaches because yeah. they follow smarter people, right? You can follow the Trevor Bowers of the worlds on YouTube. You can follow driveline on YouTube. They have all of this shit for free that people can learn to improve themselves as a baseball player. And now it just becomes imperative on the coaches. Like you need to further your education as well, mm-hmm. because as soon, as soon as like I, I get into the, I get into conversation with athletes about this all the time is kids who are, high spin, high bower unit guys who are going to be far more successful up in the zone are going to have to deal with coaches who tell them bang knees, bang knees, bang knees. I'm like, that's not where you're going to be successful. And all these kids know that they're just like, I know that I'm not going to be successful there, but my coach is going to make it imperative that I throw it at the knees and get balls in play. And that's going to be, that's what's going to fuck me over as a pitcher because if my ball has more rise on it, if I throw the ball at the knees, where's that ball going to end up? More belt high. And then the coach is going to get mad at me because for per, missing belt high. for missing belt for missing belt high when it's like I, I could just aim belt high and then the ball is going to be up at the letters and he's going to be popping shit up but there's coaches who just apparently don't understand the concept of spin rate or spin direction or anything like that it's just we've learned they were learned, they were taught as you know players themselves bang knees get the ball in play make the deep like you know get them to hit the ball and shit like that but now we there's all these mechanisms and these this information out there that tells us here's kids who succeed in that in that level and here are kids who succeed at 
throwing the ball up in the zone, get more strikeouts, right? To just, just decide that I'm going to believe in one line of thinking, and that's the only line of thinking I will ever follow for the rest of my goddamn life is just incredibly just is ignorant. It's dumb. It's what holds this game back more than anything else. Hundred percent. And I, for me, it's one of those where it's like, all right, I view you, if you're a college coach, and especially at the community college level, because there's so much more turnover than at a four year. Because you have guys coming in and out after two years and not put in four years. So there's a lot more changing of staff uh, when it comes to the roster and stuff like that. I feel like if you were a coach that was trying to sell players to come to your school, you would want to have as much information, uh, tools, just overall, the more that you have, the better more I think you could sell a kid on coming to your school. Yeah. Right. And so like if you have this athlete and I randomly pull up Twitter, uh right now I'm looking at Coach K underscore NBA, uh coach from natural baseball in Kansas, uh that puts up a video of a gentleman on a rap soto. Um looking at this information, kids throwing eighty seven uh I apologize eighty seven miles an hour with ninety two percent spin efficiency, sixteen hundred uh RPMs at a one sixteen uh spin tilt. Is that okay. what Repso does? Yes. Spin okay. So as someone that is certified on the hitting side and not pitching, I have no idea necessarily. Like I have an idea. Like, if you were to ask me what is spin rate, what is, you know, spin tilt, like, I could put together something for you, but I have zero, absolutely zero idea what this is telling me. So right. if I'm an athlete and I just go through and I go to, we were just mentioning earlier, a PBR showcase, a perfect game, like whatever it is, if I get this information. If I was an athlete, like looking at different schools, what I would do is I would go to every single one of the pitching coaches or what, whoever they are. And I would say, all right, you're saying that you're interested in me as a player. Here is my information. What would you do with that? What do you plan for me? What is the development plan for this? What is the game plan for this? Like if I'm going and I'm about to pitch and you're looking at my arsenal, what is the plan that you would put together for me? Right. And what is the development plan that you put together for me? If you're, if you don't know what these are saying and you don't have to be certified to know what these are saying, but it's one of those where it's like, if you are, I know you went through the course. Now, right. are there lots of people that could just buy the certification and go through it? Yes. Uh, this is not an end all be all. This is how we were. Uh, this is how we like hire coaches. If you have, you know, Rap Soto, Driveline, uh, On Base U, whatever it is. If you have certification in your resume, you're being hired. Like, that's not what we're trying to say. What we're trying to say is, like, don't knock somebody for being able to go through these certifications. Because if I'm an athlete and I go to a school and I have the pitching coach tell me, yeah, I don't really know what this is saying. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, get some long toss in. Right. Like, I'm going to sit there and go like, I am not going there. No. Like, it is an easy process eliminator. So on the reverse side, if that's what an athlete in modern day is looking for, you would think that a community college, especially in New York, would be a little bit more open to wanting to have coaches that could answer those questions without having to pull shit out of their ass. Right. And for me, like – I, I don't know. Everything is a selling point, especially when you're a uh, JUCO coach. Because here's the other thing. JUCOs, they're still the recruiting process, not to bring kids in, but to send kids out. So now you're going to be having four years that are going to be calling your coaching staff. That's going to be like, hey, how's so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. What's their spin rate? What's this? What's oh, you know, coach. I don't believe we, in that shit. We don't believe in that. We don't think it was worth it to spend the extra $300 plus for us to actually hire our educators education it's like okay hang up so, yeah educators well yeah exactly then you're not you're not going to be anybody that anybody goes to so it's like you're doing i feel like more of a disservice to your athletes by having this agenda or feeling or ignorance or 
like butt hurt. Like I don't know what it is. I don't know what issue it is. I don't know why there's a problem with it. But like, I, just, I, I think it's the it's it's it goes back to just an old school mentality of like you know you need to be put through the ringer. You need to go like be a GA, and then you need to do this. You need to do yeah. that. But there's this idea that. Like I don't know, like why people think like uh, is he is he implying that like a certification is like a shortcut? Yeah, it's not a shortcut. Like when I when I did when I did all my fast certifications, when I did all my or my not no my drive uh, my drive line certifications, you know I sat there and I knew ninety percent of the stuff they were talking about already. So and that but and it's like I've talked to you know you talk to Joel and you talk to JC about anything getting certifications. Like if you want to get them, go for it. You're gonna probably know ninety to ninety five percent of the content already because a lot of a lot of it is very just rudimentary, no shit Sherlock kind of stuff. But it, all you do is like you take that one thing, one or two things that you just like. Oh, I never thought about it that way, and then that become that's what makes that three hundred dollar price that three hundred dollars worth it. Or for the on base you, it was like nine hundred dollars. Like that's why you know that's why we spend that money to improve our the way we do things, the way we communicate, the way we cue, the way we program, the way we, you know, get guys to think about, all right, well, I wanted you like, say like for me in a pitch design, you know, would I know, I mean, there's enough free, there's enough free information out there now that I could get by with it. But then getting that certification allows me to be able to better communicate why I'm trying to pursue this or why is this important for the athlete, right? But got but it's one thing is like, you know, if you're just going to be lined up in one lane of thinking and not be allowed to be and not allow yourself to be malleable, then pretty like it's the way like going the way of the dodo, right? Where mm-hmm. guys are just you're going to go extinct. The guys who are just unwilling to learn and the guys who are going to be unwilling to decide are unwilling to, you know, be, they're if they're just unwilling to adapt, they're gonna lo- be losing their jobs. The jobs are going to the guys who are progressive. The guys are, <laughs> you know, the guys. The jobs are going to the guys who are willing to learn and willing to be wrong, and willing to, you know, bring in outside information to achieve what they're well, obviously what the intended goal is. Like you know, you, you look at guys in organizational ball. That's why everyone gets mad, right? Is you know, baseball's getting too analytical. They're bringing in all the nerds. They're bringing in all the, you know, these guys didn't play at the games. Like, they didn't necessarily have to play the game. The game's not that hard, right? Understanding understanding key basic concepts of baseball, you don't need to play the game, no. right? But you can set people up for success. All you got, I mean, this is what we do. Is like, we never played baseball at the highest level. I will never, ever understand what playing Major League Baseball is like. Nope. Playing in front of 20,000 people on a nightly basis. I will never understand that. But I understand how the human body works. And I understand how the pitching body works. And I'm going to put you in a position to be successful athletically. That way you can just let your body go do the work for you. And then we can work on the mental, the mindset later. But then I also know how pitch design works. And I know how to achieve greater movement on a fastball or a slider or a curveball. And I'm like, here's what adding two to three extra inches on the slider is going to do for your uh, batting average against here's how many more strikeouts you could potentially be achieving. Here's how many more, you know, first pitch strikes you could be achieving. If you just uh, changed your mentality on this, do I, does anybody, do I need to play major league baseball to know how to tell a guy that? No. Right now, granted, there are people who will come in and go like, well, you didn't play, so I'm not going to listen to you. Like, okay, that's your loss then. Yep. All right. So, you know, well, yeah, but, that's where that whole of certifications come from. It's like I can be willing to lay my my nuts on the line and go like here, here, here's what I know, here's what who I learned it from. You can you can you can either choose to trust me or not, right? Trust me or not, that's your decision. But here's some information I think could help you. You know, so take it and do do with it what you will. Um, currently, I have a hypothetical. Go for it. How funny would it be? If I, if like you could do a gift certificate of like, if I could pay for the certification for someone else and then just send them the course link, how awesome it would be for me to like buy a certification, send it to them and be like, Hey, here's a free certification for you. Like, or what if you got one for like his birthday or something like a family member was like, Oh, Hey, like I, 
I was told about this one thing. I don't know. Like, oh, I bought you give, this for give you. it to you this coach. To so you give it to him, and he's like, now he's conflicted. It's like, I've put all this blood, sweat, and tears into baseball. And the moment I, I sign up and I pass this <laughs> certification, I lose all of that. And all I've ever done is spend money. I'm not qualified to be a, a coach at my own school that I would even hire myself because right. I now have the certificate. Like you don't lose your ability to coach once you gain one, but because you have one doesn't mean you can be a coach. It's like there, I don't know. I'm not going to get too far into that. I'm looking at the time, but I uh, did a little, little quick search, uh, 10 high paying jobs that require a certification <laughs> web developer, Construction and building inspector. Um, I think that's kind of important. Uh, construction and building inspectors inspect construction sites and buildings to make sure that they are all up and required to code and they are met. Many construction and building inspectors uh, have to retake certifications uh, so that way they can stay up to date on knowing code. Wild, wild application in modern day life. Uh, pipe fitter and plumber. Plumbers and pipe fitters install and repair pipes at offices, homes, factories, and other buildings. Many plumbers learn their work through a certification course and or four to five year apprenticeship. Right. Man. Well, I mean, when you think about it, every every job has a certification at some level, right? You know. Whether... Heating, air conditioning, and refrigerator mechanic and installer. Uh, air traffic controller, dental hygienist, paralegal, uh, carpenter, electrician. Like there are all of these things that it's like, how can you knock somebody for getting a certification? Like, how can you knock somebody for improving their knowledge? Well, it, it, baffling. See, like, obviously I don't understand what this, what lane this guy is trying to operate in the idiot one. He's going the wrong way, but it's just it's it's an old school like way of it's an old school mentality of thinking. It's the you know if you need to get a certification to understand how to coach baseball, then you're not going to be a good coach. And that and I've gotten into into arguments with Jeff Fry about that before in the past, where he's just like, if you need to get these certifications, then obviously you're not that good at your job. I don't need to get the certifications. Right, I choose to get the certifications. Yes, like I don't need to get the certifications. I choose to get them. But I mean, think about like all the high level jobs that. Like you're saying, like need certifications. My mom's a certified public account. She needs to get certified every two years. What? What? She needs to get certified I every know. two years? To be an accountant. To update her knowledge oh, my... and her profession yeah. in case anything changes? Correct. I know. Shocking. If you're, not, if, you're, if, you're list, if you're listening to this, you got to go watch Connor's reaction on the YouTube. Who it's crazy. Funk? I know. Uh, I mean, it's like law- lawyers – you know, have to keep making sure they're on top of everything. It's, it's just, I think people, you know, what I do, I need a certification to be an accountant. No, I know how to accountancy works. I know how to be an accountant. Right. But I would have to get a certification to be certified public accountants. What? I know, but it's, it's just a, I think it's, and I, and I honestly think as you told me, the, read those quotes, I don't think that guy is truly a, uh, he's arguing in good faith right i think he's just he's he's a old man yelling at a cloud he's not old a young man yelling at a bro middle-aged man whatever he is but it's just that yeah you were told one way growing up and you just never allowed yourself to him for it you just never allowed yourself to alter your way of thinking right and that's just it's lazy and it it doesn't hurt you but it hurts the athletes yeah, he's older than me. So I mean, well, okay, we're in our twenties. This is true. <laughs> Not for long. Hey, oh, but yeah, I don't know. That was frustrating. I figured that could possibly uh, fire everybody up, but who knows? No, it, it doesn't. It, like, it doesn't fire me up. It's just more of a like a dude. Really, it, it's 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 really just like a like a really man kind of a thing. Not a like oh how dare this guy? This guy's so dumb. It's just like all right, dude, you stay in your lane. Uh, like you keep doing you and I'm sure that like, I'm not, I can hop on Twitter right now and go harp on this guy. I'm sure he's getting plenty of flack for it right now. Yeah. It's uh had 7,000 more views than like any of his other, like, yeah, I'm sure, tweets. I'm sure he's getting plenty of flack for it. So I don't need to go bro, harp. but I don't even know how, cause he's not, he's only had two people comment on it. Oh, but Probably. he has like 6,000 
interactions. I, I'm just well. Uh, look at look at the quote tweets if there are anything. Uh, let's see here. No, only one retweet. Mm. I don't know. Obviously, there's a reason. I don't know. He has 1,400 followers. Well, that's probably why. So I'm. At, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if you want, if you want to choose to be remain ignorant and just stay in your lane and be like, oh, I've coached this way for my entire life. Therefore I shall never change. Fine. But just know that your, your job, your role in that job is slowly dying out. Your, your role in that job is going the way a taxi driver. It's going the way of, you know, you know, with now with this new, all this new AI stuff, like copywriters and marketers, all that stuff's going away because it's going to get the people who, choose to be see things in a progressive light or choose to you know enlighten themselves and broaden their horizons are the ones that are going to get those jobs bro fuck this all right oh, no. i'm hold on sunny broom community college i'm looking up the record <laughs> i'll shut up if these guys are over 500 <laughs> <laughs> go to archives and just go to their athletics page oh i am but oh. their thing is only showing the 2023 some great radio schedule <laughs> <laughs> oh shit that's the podcast ah uh. So for the guys not watching on the podcast or watching on the YouTube, we'll end on this. That baseball program with that coach had a record of four and twenty eight last season. So I will tell that coach right now, you probably want to go get some certified coaches and all the things you hate. Moving on to our final segment of this week, we're going to go going right back to our uh, guess the player on uh, baseball reference. So, Connor, do you have your player yet? I do. You do? Okay. Hit me with it. Um, Let's see here. What do you want to know first? Uh, what years did he play? Uh, played from 06 to 08. 06 to 08. Oh, two years. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll do another I one. I am too good at this game. You I'll, can't beat me. Yeah. I'll do another one. Uh, love you, Jason. Shout out to you, brother. Um, I, uh, that was such a basic answer. <laughs> that was so basic. All right. Well, you're waiting for another one. To yeah. Pull up. up yours. I got mine. All, All right. right. Well, let's go for it. Um, What years? He is, He's played from 2020 or 2011, and he is still currently playing. 2011 current um what position he is a catcher salvador perez god damn it oh put it in the record books ladies and gentlemen put it in the record books finally he's got he got one <laughs> i was hoping we'd have to get to like worlds i can't believe he was a world series mvp you can't believe that yeah, like, well, who I get? Who else was on that team? Uh, Lorenzo Kane, Alex Gordon. Yeah, um, yeah, you had um, Ventura, Mo Moose, Moose, Moustakis. Moose, bro. Um, I'll be honest, that's all I can think of. Yeah, it's just it's one of those. I mean, he's he's a he's a good hitter. He had a really good year this past year, hitting wise. He did. He actually, actually he, he, he took what he take had off. A, he had a two. He had a two point seven WAR. Uh, 23 home runs, 250 uh, batting average. Yeah, it's not bad. 110 OPS, so he's 10% better than average. 2015 World Series. All right, you got you got it. Uh oh, I, I stopped. Oh, <laughs> I started looking at Jason. You, when you when you Jason's. got when you got when you got too excited for yourself. Well, I, yeah, and I started looking more at Jason shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't don't look at that. I mean, he did better than I did. It's true. I guess this is an easy way to tell. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Jason's birthday is coming up. Oh, yes. Um, shout out to Baseball Reference for helping me out with that. <laughs> February 20th. Good to know. Good to know. I won't say the year. I won't out you like that. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Who should I pick? 
who should I pick? Who should I? Who should I? Who should I? But like, I don't. Did he have like a big like? I'm sorry. I'm just going to look back at the 2015 World Series. I'm like, did he just like have a, have a big hit or something like that? Because I feel like, oh, Frankie was on that team. Oh, really? Oh, Fra- yeah, Frankie that's Mar- right. Frankie Morales was on that team. Fast performance athlete. Fast performance athlete. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. I just don't know, like, too many. Oh, yeah. He hit 364. Let's see here. Two doubles, no home runs, two RBIs. I mean, yeah, like objectively, like Lorenzo Cain had a way better World Series, in my opinion, at least. Or no. Yeah. Anyway. All right, I got one. Oh, yeah, go for it. Oh, wait, I think we've already... Have you done him already? I think you... Yeah. Damn. Oh, well, that was a quick one. We were able to make it. I'll give you one more. Give me one more. I'll give you one more. Um... Okay. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So he, he he's currently playing. He's made his major league debut in 2013. 2013. Bryce Harper? Nope. Um, what position? He is a outfielder. Um, how many teams has he played on? He has played on two teams. Lefty or righty hitter? Lefty. What numbers? Uh, what number? What? Uh, no, don't give me that. I don't know how to answer that. Oh, uh, what number was he on his first team? Uh, twenty-one. What number is he now? 22. Um, is he a lefty or righty thrower? Right-handed. What are his awards? His awards? He is a one-time MVP, a two-time All-Star, a one-time Gold Glove winner, a three-time Silver Slugger, and two-time batting title champion. Alex Gordon? No. Good guess, though. Gordon never won an MVP. Any, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Honestly, I uh, saw the lefty and righty outfield, and he just retired. Damn. That was a bad guess. And he's not even 21, and he only played for the Royals. That was a really bad guess. Yeah, that was Tough. not great. <laughs> not a good guess at all. <laughs> Can you repeat the awards? I got so excited when I saw lefty hitter, righty thrower. Uh, MVP. Yep. Two-time All-Star. One-time Gold Glove winner, three-time Silver Slugger, and two-time Batting t- Champ. Is he in the NL or AL now? NL. Um, let's see here. That's a really good one. He says current. Current. He's a current player. Currently number 22. And is a righty or lefty hitter. As a two-time all-star, three-time silver slugger. Y'all don't have us? Nope. I don't even know what, if he's a righty thrower. No, I don't know either. I just I think that's he's on the second team. Oh, but he's the same age as I am. So he wouldn't be playing since 2013. <laughs> International or American? He is American. Uh, Drafted out of high school or out of college? 
He was drafted out of high school in the first round of the 2010 draft. Bro, and you said it's not Bryce Harper. It is not Bryce Harper. He's not even f- – he's number fucking three, not 22. Damn it. Um, Let's see here. First round overall pick. Was he drafted as an out- outfielder? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. I don't know if you can check that or not. Um, Let's see here. Number 22. He's on the second team. I'm, like, trying to picture – He's a lefty bat. You're going to hate this when you get the answer. Bro. What throws me in a loop is the gold glove. That should I feel like that should make it more obvious, but like I can't think. And he's in the NL right now. Who the fuck is 22? With the silver sluggers, bro. He had a 2.7 war last year. He had 14 home runs. He hit 252 and uh, 575 at bats. He had 57 RBI. He had, I think he had a pretty injury plagued year last year. I don't know. He played 154 games. He just had a terrible year. Actually, for him, still, it was actually a good one. 111 OPS plus. Not bad. Uh, I have an idea for future games. Let's make a rule for 20 questions. You have 20 seconds to ask a question. Okay. Well, give me a question. Well, I, I'm saying for me, like, well, I need, like, you otherwise I question. need to, like, lose. Let's go. I know. Well, I can't. I can't. I'm pissed. I'm mad. I'm angry. Frustrated. Flustered. <laughs> Bro, NL. Jack Peterson. Nope. Damn it. I think he is 22, actually. The lefty hitter. He's not even an outfielder, though. Jack Peterson? He's a DA in first base in DH. Well, Jack played outfield for the Dodgers. A little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he went to San Fran. Mm-hmm. Oh, but then he played for Atlanta. I give the worst guesses. I even <laughs> walk myself out of my guesses after I guess it. Bro. Come on, you got it. I believe in you. I want to say, like, I keep thinking of Andrew, like, <clears throat> 22 in my head. Andrew McC- or Andrew McCutcheon named 22. He's 24. If it makes you feel better, he was the 23rd pick in the first round of the 2010 draft. Shoot, dude. All right, let's make let's make it for better radio. What team is he on? What team what was his first team? Miami. He's an outfielder? I can't wait for I can't wait for the light bulb to go off. He's 21 with my uh, Yelich. Yep. <laughs> it's Christian Yelich. It was a long road, but we eventually got there. <laughs> All right, Connor, do you have anything to plug? Uh, yeah. While you, while you sit um, here, while you wall, you're in your embarrassment. <laughs> Uh, we actually have a news crew that's coming today uh, that's going to be checking out the facility. And they are actually going to be capturing, uh, when they come over, the number one and number two team in our Hit Tracks League oh, that nice. will be playing. So really excited for that. Um, it is Fox 31. I have no idea when it is airing. So yeah. if we could, uh, on Tuesday, probably after this, we'll find out when it's going to air. Um, I'll have Cole see if he can put it in the uh, post credits. Yeah. Um, and so that way, if you guys are able to uh, check it out, I'm really excited for that. Again, every Sunday, 11 to 4, we're doing our live stream of the Hitrax League. 
And uh, yeah, outside of that, oh, uh, go to the Instagram, fast underscore RBI. Um, hopefully here soon, we're going to be getting a program called On Form. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll put a little pressure on Jason, making this a public announcement. And so I'm going to start doing a uh, daily highlight of uh, each one of my uh, athletes. We just got done with a three week, or I apologize, three month progression, uh, kind of from our guys from November to uh, now. So that way we can kind of get an idea of uh, how much better we're getting, stuff like that. The, but I'll have side by side video uh, with comparisons and then also their data sheets in these uh, highlights uh, on the Instagram. Where can they find you on the, on the, on the Instagrams and the fast underscore RBI baby, just Perfect. like everything else? Uh, what do you got there to plug, Nicole? Uh, you can just follow me on fat, at fast Cole Thomas Fast on Instagram, C Thomas624 on Twitter. You can follow Fast Performance at Fast Performance CEO on Instagram. You can follow Fast Baseball on. Uh, Instagram at Fast Baseball on TikTok and on Instagram. And you can find Fast Colorado at fastcolorado.com and find all the new things that we're working on, all the new things that are coming to the facility. We look, I mean, obviously, we look forward to this uh, camera crew coming in. Hey. But yeah, uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, or ideas, please let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear your feedback. We will see you all next Tuesday.